Dr. Robin Murphy joins us today from Texas A&M University, and we're going to talk about the future of robots in a post-COVID world. As a result of COVID-19, we're going to have robots everywhere, everywhere, because we're using them everywhere for COVID. I mean, everybody thinks of the robots, oh, okay, for healthcare and maybe telepresence and telenursing, but no, we're using them for public safety, for quarantine enforcement, for uh, disinfecting public spaces. We're using them for laboratory automation, for delivery, delivery of infectious you know, samples, but also food, supplies, things like that. We're using them now. Regular people are using them for socializing, for asking people out on a date. One person in Cyprus used his to walk his dog since he wasn't allowed out. So we're seeing robots everywhere, and not just military or government, regular people, regular industry, regular individuals use it. What has been the impact of this moment of COVID on your field, on robotics, on robots? It's been pretty large, but you know, you're touching on one of the big myths about disasters and particularly disaster robotics, is that, you know, we're going to do something like Apollo 13. We're going to get some duct tape and room and we're doing it. We're going to tape it all together and we're going to make it work, you know, without a lot of sleep. And, and that's not what happens at all. If you, if you look at disasters, starting with the very first use of robots and disasters at 9-11, it's always things that are technologically mature and have already been used, but maybe not exactly for that application, but they were already there because you would never use, it would be irresponsible and unethical to use things that were not technologically mature because you can make a disaster worse. You can make things worse. And then we think about healthcare. Oh my gosh, the, the ramifications are there. So what you see, what you've seen is a lot of robots that already existed get used a lot more and a lot more visibly. And everybody who's, you know, healthcare is famous as sort of a slow adoption cycle, public safety, same way. And now they're like, wait, well, that hospital has disinfection robots and they've been around since 2015. And well, why don't we have them? So it's really taking a lot of robots that are existing. Same thing with aerial vehicles. Uh, oh, we've had a very good investment all over the world in agricultural sprayers. So you've got these robots that look like a pizza plate quadcopter, but they can carry chemicals and do very precision agriculture. Well, you can just grab those, change out what you're spraying and make it disinfectant. Bingo. Now we've got a, a whole nother set of applications. But they existed. They were already easy to use. Anybody can use those. So we're seeing a whole lot of robots like that. And the innovation that we're seeing with robots is mostly on the use using existing mature robots. Of course, the question in everyone's mind is, what will be the impact of all these robots doing work on humans and our jobs? I mean, we've, we've been arguing that you, you, you don't see a huge job replacement. You may see job displacement. But in general, you're not even seeing that much job displacement. Well, now, here's great examples of you didn't put any doctors or nurses out of work. You protected them. You let them to work better, longer, at compassionate, hands-on intellectual tasks rather than doing things like take out the infected trash, having to expose themselves and things. So now we're beginning to see this idea that you can work with robots, that they can be tools, they can help you with capacity. They, they don't have to look like they're from uh, Westworld. They don't have to be humanoid. They don't have to be... Uh, you know, a general, an artificial general intelligence. They just have to be smart enough, but, uh, enough like a dog to say, take that there. Yeah. What do you think are the robotic surprises that may be in store that people right now are not thinking about what might happen? That's a, that's a fantastic question. Um, I think maybe the biggest surprise isn't really a surprise surprise. It's we've, we already see a lot about drones, you know, zip, zip, you know, things going around. I mean, I love the commercial where for the car where the guy goes out and all the, the drones are like thwacking, you know, shooting little lasers at people and he gets his car and is able to escape. But, you know, so we, we kind of have that zeitgeist about, about drones, but I think that was the big win. 
So I think what we're going to see is more of those types of uses instead of, yeah, yeah, drones are kind of scary and they're there. You know, it's kind of like, no, they're actually kind of in our everyday life and they're cheap and expensive. So I think they're going to become actually more pervasive. I think one of the big things that are going to come out in the next five years is the increasing use of marine robots underwater and surface robot boats because let's face it, 80% of the world's population lives by water. Our critical infrastructure, the really hard part to figure out are things like the bridges, the underwater part. Civil engineers explained to me very sadly one time, they said, yes, yes, we don't really care about aerial vehicles because we can actually see with the binoculars. Okay, uh, we got that part down. It's the underwater part. And so I think the advances that we're seeing in low cost marine vehicles is really going to show up in the next five to 10 years.